I understand there's going to be a new chapter starting in your life. Can you tell us about it? Sure. Uh, December's are kind of an important month for me. I, uh, I was born in December, uh, got married in December, and uh, received both my degrees in December. And so uh, this December I'm turning 60, and I'm also planning to go ahead and retire uh, from my position as city librarian at the end of the month, December 31st. How many years have you been here at the library? Uh, it's been a little over 30. Uh, be 31 years uh, in March of 2012, but I'll be leaving New Year's Eve uh, of this year. What's What are some of your plans? Uh, I don't expect you're just going to sit around and read books. What are you going to do? <laughs> well, uh, my wife and I thought this was pretty good time to, to be thinking about a transition. We thought of all the things that we'd rather do at 60 than at 70, so so probably we're going to do some traveling first. I think a lot of folks uh, have that in mind when they retire, but what I've told a lot of people is that uh, uh, in my retirement, uh, reading, definitely. Writing, probably. Study and teaching, possibly. So I have a number of things that, uh, that, that I've had on the back burner that I'd kind of like to bring to the front burner at this point. You've been here so many years. Is there a special place in the library, uh, some place that you like to spend time? Well, yes, I think for a number of reasons the local and family history room is, is an area I'm particularly fond of. There are a number of reasons for that. Uh, Can we take a look at it? Sure. Let's, let's go ahead and take a look. Why is this room so special to you? Well, the local history room uh, holds a special place in my heart because uh, I am a historian and I'm also interested in history, but it also contains the history both of this organization uh, and of the community. And it's sort of like a, a never-ending well of resources of things that uh, are fascinating and, and very useful. Okay. Can you show us uh, maybe something in here that is especially meaningful to you? Sure. You can come this way. I'll show you over here in our uh, locked cases. We have the remainder of the first 150 books that this uh, this library uh, first purchased when the library was founded in 1899. The library was founded by the Tyler Federation of Women's Clubs uh, and uh, it occurred after the 1898 meeting when the Texas Federation met here and the Texas Federation of Women's Clubs decided one of its important uh, roles was to help promote library development and the Tyler Federation took that to heart and the very next year started a subscription library up on the square and we have an accession book that shows us all of the items that were purchased uh, by the uh, Federation as they developed the, the, the Tyler Library. And, but what you see here typically are, are very uh, uh, weighty tomes uh, that were uh, history, political science, uh, natural science, uh, art, literature and uh, just just a, a tremendous wealth of materials that, that were purchased and it's fun to look through these uh, 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 accession records and see uh, day by day, week by week and year by year how the collection was developed and how it was built and all the important books that were that were purchased. It's, it's, it's always a, a, a fruitful source of information. That seems like a, a fairly lofty goal for a very young organization. Well. I, I think it was, and I think that, um, you know, I know it's, it's sort of a, a trite statement, but we do stand on the shoulders of giants, and the folks that founded this library, both the, uh, the women's clubs, and then as it transitioned to a city library and the library board, uh, they were all engaged in the life of the mind in Tyler, Texas, and were very interested in seeing the library as a tool that would help people develop uh, in their own lives, uh, meeting information, education and recreation needs. You've been in the business so long. What do you think the future holds for libraries? Well, I'm, I've been here 30 years, but I've been in the business almost 40 years uh, in other locations as well. So I, I have had a chance to, to see changes. Um, we have behind us here a little bit of the old, the print on paper resources, but we also have a bit of the new, and that's the, com the computers that we use. I think, by and large, the biggest change that libraries have experienced in the time that I've been in it is the digital revolution. The digitization of texts and the ready availability of materials on the web and, and on the internet. Uh, so what we've done is we've essentially sort of followed the curve, the trend of um, development of information resources 
and have tried to make available to the public those things that are going to help them meet their educational, uh, informational and recreation needs, just, a, just like we always have with books and then long playing records and then tapes and DVDs and, and now databases and digital resources. Do you have electronic things, electronic books sure. and the other sort of what like that? What we have available are downloadable uh, e-audio books and e-books. Uh, patrons with library cards can download those to the devices they have. We're with Overdrive, which is one of the companies that downloads things to Kindles as well. And then we of course have the resources in the building. Uh, people can go to the Tech Share databases from the State Library. The State Library sponsors something called the Library of Texas. allows them to search, in a sense, all the online catalogs in the state. And they can find items that we can interlibrary loan for them and bring in. Or we can actually find full text of the newspaper, magazine, journal articles uh, that they can then download or read online. Do you have a preference, print versus electronic? My personal leisure time preference for reading is print on paper. Uh, my wife has a Kindle and sometimes she hands it over and, and lets me look at it, but uh, I'm, I'm still old school enough that I kind of like print on paper. But in my daily work, I really don't uh, have any prejudice one way or the other. Uh, we're kind of focused on the content and on meeting the customer's needs and uh, we want to use whatever resource is going to be most efficient and most effective in doing that. So, so we're, we're plugged in and we're ready for, for, for being the digital solution to the digital revolution.